Hello and welcome to our glorious Ashes of Creation June development update. We hope everyone is well and safe and has been having a wonderful month. On our front, it has been crazy. We've got a lot going on yes. and you better buckle in, strap up because it's going to be a long one today. I hope everyone brought their snacks. I was warning people in the chat. So you've been warned. It is It is going to be a long one. I mean, what, what are we thinking here? Probably at least an hour and a half, if not maybe two. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, depending on how many questions we answer after. The, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. But a lot of good information, a lot of new information and updated information from old information. So keep that in mind as we're moving forward today. But to cover what we're going to be covering, we're going to go quick reminders. I'm going to try to be really quick about that. Freehold update. We'll do some art updates, which includes some new Nikuin awesomeness. I, I know folks have been asking about more dwarf stuff and a studio update and Q&A. So first and foremost, we have our spotlight for our YouTube comment, which comes from Zash Welsh guy and wants to know with fishing, will we be able to use the fish we catch with the animal husbandry profession? Maybe have a freehold pond or a fish tank in the player home. Yeah, this is something that we have um, uh, ideas around and designs around. We haven't done any implementation or development for it yet, but the idea is that um, for certain types of fish or certain very rare kind of trophy-esque uh, fish, you would be able, instead of using the material, to go through a process that might put it into things that are more cosmetic-focused, like a fish tank or a pond on the freehold or something in the house. Um, we definitely have some ideas around there. I think it's a super cool thing to kind of see something you've taken from the world and now that you've domesticated or put into uh, your customizable space. So great question. It's definitely on the top of our minds. It's something that we're going to be exploring post-Alpha 2. Awesome, awesome. And then we've got Stephen will be on the Ashen Forge over on twitch.tv slash theory forge on July 9th. I think that they're going to be putting up a thread over on our forums as well to gather some questions from the community after the live stream. So definitely check that out. Stephen will probably answer a lot of questions. They always have a good time and ask a lot of good, good things. And of course, we also have our dev discussion about role playing up. We would love for you to tell us what systems and features make role playing fun, what features help remove hurdles and barriers. So if you have thoughts on that, please feel free to pop on over to our forums and give us your thoughts. And of course, we also have our cosmetic swap over happening for the Songs of the Sea on July 12th, 2023. And I know that we have previously said that the packages will be changing coming up in the future, but Stephen was giving y'all a, a long warning. <laughs> it's going to be a bit before that changeover happens, but we will give you guys ample notice with an FAQ on details of what that will entail. And with that, we will move on to Freehold Goodness. So if you want to do any yes. prefaces here, Stephen. Yes, let me give you guys a bit of a preface. So um, we decided to take a little bit of a different approach with this presentation. Um, the first half of this is going to be really focused in on detailing out some of the mechanics of the freehold system. Um, a part of it is going to be reiterating what you guys have known for a while, but another part of it is going to be uh, giving some updates around these designs and some changes that have occurred uh, in anticipation of the rollout for freeholds during Alpha 2. Um, so give us your feedback on whether or not you like the style of this approach for the presentation. Um, the first, like I said, half of it is going to be us kind of going through slides and showing some of the tech trees of the buildings and some of the um, uh, purposes of these different systems on the freehold. And then after that, we're going to have a little bit of gameplay in the world showcasing uh, the freeholds. I believe Bucky has a freehold. We're going to be going through doing some farming on it, uh, some live interactions with some of the livestock. We're also going to be showing off uh, as an ancillary um, uh, uh, overview some of the changes that we had talked about previously to the inventory system. Um, we're going to show some of the storage off. We're going to uh, um, show off a couple of new mounts and, and some of the mining areas. But it's something that uh, really the focus is uh, giving you guys expectations around how freeholds have changed uh, coming towards Alpha 2. So hopefully you guys enjoy. This is going to be a long one. It's about an hour long video. Yeah, over an hour long. <laughs> yes. So enjoy and we'll see you afterwards.
Hello everyone and welcome to another, I was about to say day in Vera, but actually we are going to be doing something a little bit different than what you are accustomed to. And the reason for this is because we are getting a little bit into the systems and the mechanics of how freeholds work. And it's gonna be a two-part presentation. The first of which you're seeing now is going to be in the format of a more PowerPoint-oriented kind of presentation, talking about the mechanics, looking at skill trees. Um, and then the second part is going to be in-game, where we're gonna take a look at some of the systems like farming, um, uh, livestock, housing, and storage. Uh, but I am joined today by three absolutely glorious developers on the Ashes of Creation dev team. Our designers, first of which is a regular appearing guest, Mr. Bucky. How you doing, Bucky? Hey, how's it going? I'm Bucky, uh, aka Dr. Bucky. I'm a game Bucky. designer here at Intrepid, uh, <laughs> helping out some of the arts and ship designs and also some of the systems related to nodes and freeholds and also a little bit of combat design. Yes, and we also have with us joining, I believe for the first time, one of our glorious designers, Mike. Hello, uh, my name is Mike. I'm a senior system designer here at Intrepid. Uh, it's oh, really nice to be economy. here. Yeah, yes. I deal with economy and itemization, and this is the first time on live stream. I'm really excited. Yeah. Yes, we're excited to have you as well. And we have Corey also. Corey, I believe you were on our December um, live stream that we did. Yeah, I was there for uh, uh, the gathering, and uh, yeah, I'm Corey, I'm a technical designer, and I focus uh, mostly on artisanship and economy, um, kind of jump around to other things, but those, those are my main things. Yes, now we have an exciting uh, topic today, which is, I think, near and dear to a lot of players' hearts, and that is freeholds. And we're, what are we looking at here? Tell me a little bit of what this uh, concept art is. We've, we've obviously talked a lot about freeholds in the past uh, as a system since you know back in 2017 when we uh, first were discussing Ashes of Creation with the community during Kickstarter and what the intent of freeholds are. But what are we looking at? And tell me a little bit about the system overall. So yeah, we got a little... Uh you know, example set of a freehold here, right? We got on the left, we have some uh, farmable animals, some livestock here in pens. And then we have in the middle, there's a bunch of crop rows of farmable crops the players can have. And then there's a couple different examples of uh, different kind of freehold buildings you can have on your freehold. One of which is the house uh, on the right, and then some other uh, freehold buildings as well. Like it looks like there's a mill in the back there as well. Yeah, and for those of you, um, you know, who, who have just been kind of tuning into Ashes of Creation's development or don't follow along in, in game development or other projects, this type of concept art is really important, um, especially for the artists on the team who are helping develop and create the world around you. It kind of sets the mood for what we're trying to accomplish um, when environment art starts creating these assets and uh, starts creating these environments, right? What's the type of visuals we're looking to achieve? Yeah, it really, really helps us, right? Like, uh, we, we can we can only do so much on paper, um, and it, we have to start kind of visualizing uh, the ideas, right? So uh, kind of coming up with the space and, you know, what's going to fit and how's it going to look and all of these things that we want to coexist uh, in, in this space, right? Like, concept lets us know whether or not it's even possible. So looking at stuff like this is super exciting. Yes. And, and as I said, we have a few updates to the system that we're going to go over in detail uh, through this PowerPoint. But to start us off, let us ask a question. What exactly are freeholds? Freeholds obviously have a lot of, of different purposes within Ashes of Creation. However, three main purposes that freeholds provide are allowing really players an opportunity to kind of express themselves in a highly customizable fashion, right? So these are plots of lands that you have access to you can build different types of buildings on you can uh, create housing and place furniture and you can grow livestock and you can just own this piece of land and one unique thing about allowing the players to kind of express themselves through this manner in ashes of creation is that it's in the open world so it's not an instance or a phase location that you are kind of customizing you're actually leaving a mark on the world that's representative of you as a player, as a character or something. Something you can you can role play. Um, but importantly enough, when it comes to the economy, freeholds also provide 
um, the highest level of processing that's available. And processing is one of three primary branches that exists within the artisanship system. Uh, price, uh, processing is kind of the intermediary step between what you gather in the wild and what you eventually craft via recipes. The, the other primary purpose of freeholds is that they allow you to offer certain types of business services, right? Because we don't just want to make freeholds delegated to the individual owner. We want it to have capabilities to kind of interact with other players as they're walking past your freehold, as they're going to these hunting grounds and participating in quests or, or um, events that might be existing around. And that means that location matters for the freehold uh, because it's important to the business. Um, have you guys ever, I mean, Corey, Bucky, uh, Mike, have you guys ever played a game that's had a system as intricate as freeholds are uh, in an MMO? Talk to me a little bit about your experiences. Um, I like there are housing systems in other MMOs, right? But like, yeah. uh, but it's not as much ambitious of projects that we we're trying to accomplish here. Right. Um, there's always, you know, like putting some furniture, putting some um, some cosmetic stuff that's on the freehold to look nice. But like, we're trying to accomplish three major pillars, which is you know looking unique, making an um, impact in the economy, and I really love the part that we're trying to make a footprint onto the real world yes. that you you are actually owning a piece of land in an MMO. And I think that's really yes. cool. I think it's super cool too. I mean, I, you know, I've played games obviously that have housing systems and they sometimes delegate, you know, those housing uh, locations to very specific areas that are off the beaten path and, you know, aren't necessarily fully integrated into the rest of the world or certain environments and areas that players like to play in. And one thing that I like that we're achieving with, with the freehold system is really moving that into the world that players are a part of and doing things in. Um, here we're kind of, you know, looking at a layout and talk to me a little bit, Bucky, about, you know, these different aspects of the types of buildings that you can place and the things that you can do on the freehold that we see here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, players will have a lot of a lot of freedom in, in what they choose to outfit their freehold with and kind of like what you were talking about before. And, you know, in other games, we've seen different housing systems where it's more kind of like plot based and you're kind of locked into mm -hmm. specific places for buildings and stuff. But um, in ours, it's going to be you have a lot more freedom in where those buildings go, which buildings you choose, how many buildings you even want. If you want to just sacrifice maybe some building space for additional farming space. So players will have a lot of opportunity um, to customize the way their freehold uh, looks and operates. Yeah. Absolutely cool. I see that there, there is a shed that's listed there. Is that shed? Uh, do we talk about the shed a little bit later in the in the in the presentation? Yeah, we can we can touch on that later. I think. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. So <clears throat> you're obviously asking yourself, how do I own a freehold? Bucky, do you want to talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. So it's kind of a multi-step process, but the first thing you'll have to do is you have to uh, complete a quest to unlock the ability to even uh, acquire the freehold permit. So once you do that quest uh, line, you'll be able to go to the node and uh, bid on an available freehold permit. If you're able and, to and, win the permit, oh, sorry. And real quick, Bucky, so the, the purpose of that quest is, <clears throat> you know, these nodes aren't just going to grant the ability to own land within their zone of influence to anybody, right? Exactly. And so the, que the quest is kind of a method by which the node gets to vet both the intent of the player who's attempting to own this parcel of land, uh, but also whether or not they are up to the chops of actually owning and servicing a freehold, because it takes a lot to to service these freeholds. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. And so talk to us a little bit about these parcels. Like, how do they exist around the node? Yeah, so basically there'll be a variety of uh, predetermined parcels of land in each node's zone of influence. Um, and once players acquire, acquire their freehold permit, they'll be able to lay claim to any available parcel in the issuing nodes region. So any, and by region, we mean that any, any uh, region, nodes region is the total combined territory of a node and all of its vassal mm -hmm. nodes. So if you, if you acquire a freehold permit in the metropolis of a huge region, you know, almost 20% of the map, right? You'll be able to lay a claim to an available parcel anywhere within that region. So it gives you a lot of freedom if you're able to acquire the permit from a metropolis. Yeah, now this is this is one of the first changes for those of you in our core audience who have been following development for a, a period of time now. You will know <clears throat> that because we are in active development, 
everything that relates to the design of the game is available to be iterated upon and changed. And so, as I said at the start of this, you're going to be seeing a little bit of changes to the systems, and we'll eventually show you here in-game some of those uh, systems. But you're going to see a little bit of change, and this is one of the first ones, is that these are predetermined locations that exist around the node or under its vassal structure um, <clears throat> that you will have the ability to bid on. And to give you kind of a sense there, this allows us to, to customize a bit of those um, those those predetermined parcels like a Sherwood forest type of example or you know the 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 hills of of of, of um, verdant Glen or something thank right? you exactly thank you um, <clears throat> essentially letting us kind of customize that and then when you own when you've taken the um, the permit for that parcel then you get to go and place your freehold uh, plot out in that section of that area of the world, right? And nodes will have many parcels by which they are able to to uh, sell permits to, um, and it will be on a uh, auction basis. So talk to us a little bit about that permit and what it looks like to lay that down, Bucky. Sure, yeah, so it'll basically be an item in your bag. And once you, uh, you know, you get to your parcel, you claim that piece of land, and then once it's claimed, you'll be able to uh, use the item to, you know, go into top-down view and lay out actually exactly where your freehold will go on that parcel of land. And you'll have a lot of freedom, so a lot of a lot of that will be going through, looking at your whole area of land you now own, uh, claim to, and then deciding where the best spot to put your freehold in there would be. Awesome. And and <clears throat> you know, having this type of layout uh, makes it so that in the world when we talk about the visual fidelity and the kind of you know freehold density that might exist out in these open areas. We don't want it to be where you're running through the world and at every glance you see someone's freehold, right? Exactly. Um, and what this allows us to kind of do is partition those spaces out so that there's a minimum distance essentially between the different freeholds. Yeah, and okay, there'll be so places like where you won't be able to put a freehold even, right? Like a point of yes. interest or roads or, you know, a dungeon area. So the uh, parcels will kind of be mapped around those areas as well. Awesome. Very cool. Uh I also want to point out um, yeah. the, the concept art of this piece is vastly different than what we showed earlier, so which kind of gives you the freedom of the placement of what you can do. This is like way more yes. farming in district, uh, in farming uh, aesthetics Industry. where yeah. where the the gatherables are a whole bunch in the middle and then there's like a, a storage mill kind of thing in the middle. So that's how much freedom that we want to offer players, how, how customizable a freehold can be. Yeah, I love it. It's super, it's super cool. It's, uh, you know, like like we said, one of the first and most important aspects of the freehold system is that it's giving the players that level of customization to help them represent their identity, the identity of their character, right? Um, now, obviously, the uh, a freehold would not be a freehold without a house. Um, that's the most important aspect of. Um, the freehold system. It's also what is the first necessary thing that you must build. Talk to us a little bit about housing. Yeah, so as you can see here, we got some examples of the different uh, sizes of houses you might be able to have on your freehold. Um, and the fr first, like you said, the first building you need to build on the field is a house. And then once you do that, you're able to you know, build other buildings like the different uh, partisanship buildings or businesses we'll get to later. Um, and now before, before that house is present, what's on the freehold? It's just an empty plot of land. All you have will be the little storage sh shed that gives you the base uh, storage to be able to bring materials to your freehold and then make your construction. Nice, awesome. So basically, as you acquire um, that house uh, blueprint, you go and you preview the location of the house blueprint on the piece of land. And when you lay down the construction site, you're expected to bring materials through the caravan system or through the mule system, or even individually if you want to take many trips. Um, to the location of the shed and then deposit within that shed's uh, uh, storage. Is that correct? Exactly, yeah. That's how it works. Cool. And then and once what you happens do that, if I want to... to... No, go ahead. Right. Sorry. I was just going to say, once once you do that, you'll be able to initiate the construction and complete the house and then proceed with your other thing. Very cool. And so you were talking a little bit about um, the housing sizes, right? Small, medium, and large. These actually have mechanical influences around the design of the freehold system. Talk to us a little bit about what that size controls. Yeah, well, one of the main things it'll control is your furniture allotment. So 
a small house, for example, might only be able to place, you know, 100 furniture items, whereas a medium or large house would be able to place many more. And so that's kind of a balancing factor for players in determining if they want to have a larger house or have a smaller house and have more farmland, whereas they're sacrificing furniture then for that. Got it. So space actually matters here. And when you talk about, you know, that furniture having a, a functional benefit to the player, Corey, what are some examples of that, you know, furniture system? I know we've talked in the past about some of these, but talk to me a little bit about the importance of having that furniture and how that furniture kind of gets placed. Is it going to be placed anywhere? Is it going to be placed on top of each other? Tell us a little bit about the, the furniture. Yeah, um, uh, you know, placing the furniture is like one of the the most fun, at least for me, parts of, of customizing, you know, your, your place oh, or, yeah. or your land, right? Like, that's where you can really kind of express yourself and, you know, oh, this looks like a good place to have a dining room. Oh, this looks like a good place to put my bed. Um, you know, maybe uh, this is looking really cozy. I'd like to do my cooking in here. I can play place down a, a, a cooking station, right? So um, uh, the, the other point, too, is that, like, not all furniture is um, just cosmetic, right? There, there could be functional furniture. Um, and we're not talking just uh, a chair that you can, you know, interact with and sit down with. But there might be something all, all along the lines of uh, furniture that, that gives you buffs or um, bolsters up um, some consumables that you may have, right? Like, uh, so there, there, there is more to the space that the house gives you to, to place the furniture because that might uh, allow you to get more function out of uh, said furniture. So there, there's some, some thought uh, that goes into whether or not you want more furniture space or less furniture space, more farmland, less farmland. Um, it, it's pretty fun. Absolutely. I, I love it when the furniture <clears throat> actually has a purpose, right? Outside of just the visual appearance and the aesthetic of the home, but is something that, you know, players are called to interact with because it provides a, a benefit in the game as well. Now, housing, of course, wouldn't be housing um, without the ability to customize that appearance. And you'll see here a few different examples of uh, housing that's representative of uh, at least eight of the nine different races. They, you'll notice that the Tolna aren't represented here, but the, they will be represented in the future. Um, but the blueprint that we talked about earlier, when you when you acquire this blueprint, talk to me a little bit, Mike, about that process. Where do you kind of acquire these blueprints? What are the multiple ways that you can get them, um, essentially? So a blueprint like uh, the basic ones could be sold at a node at a vendor, uh, something similar to what uh, a node is racial influences. So if it's a Kalar node, you should be able to buy a Kalar house. But uh, it's interesting that we tie this system to a, a blueprint because we can have do so much more itemization portion of it. So we can drop it from a boss, we can make it from a scribe, can write a blueprint that is very specific or unique look. And, yes. and if you went to a Kalar node, maybe they'll sell a recipe to, to write a medium killer house. And if you go to a Renkai one, they'll just sell you a blueprint for a large uh, Renkai house, right? So there yeah. is that acquisition of like blueprint collecting, and then you can sell that to other players when you acquire a unique housing blueprint from a boss, for example, right? Oh, yeah. So, cool. I like the market implications that that has where you essentially can get these uniquely acquired uh, blueprints and then you can trade and sell them to other players who might not have had the same opportunity to acquire them that you had. Um, sure. and, and in addition to that, we have obviously uh, cosmetics that we have um, sold as part of different uh, packs throughout the past uh, our pre-order system. Um, those cosmetics are split into three primary categories housing artisanship and business and <clears throat> we will have a breakdown that we're going to be uh, releasing of the cosmetics that have come previously and which categories they exist in but players will have the option to s override the appearance of a blueprint that exists within one of those categories with an associated cosmetic skin and you know that is obviously not just something that can be uh, purchased through the pre-order system, but also can be achieved in game as well are cosmetics that can be applied to specific building types. Um, <clears throat> and we don't get as granular where, let's say, you might have a shrine cosmetic uh, and you have, let's say, a blacksmith building. 
um, that you wouldn't be able to apply the shrine to the blacksmith building. If the shrine exists in the artisanship lane, you can apply it to any artisanship type building, but not to a house or a business. So giving a little bit of additional context um, uh, there. So what are businesses, you might ask, after hearing that category? Businesses serve a specific function. Mike, do you want us to talk to us a little bit about businesses? Uh, business building is a category where we wanted to kind of branch out of just artisanship buildings, right? So things like taverns, things like uh, market kind of thing where you can install a player stall so other people can come and visit your freehold and buy uh, things that that's unique to tie to you. Or other services like ta taverns where you could sell uh, a food buff that's unique to your tavern or something that you can kind of invest and then build so you can have a service building that's near to a POI that's really populated, so you can help players to, you know, maybe gain more XP buff, um, things like that. Um, and this is the perfect place where we can express that and then allow players to customize their freehold even more. Um, we yeah. wanted to branch out from artisanship, just only that, and then have more options for it. Very cool. I love it. I love the idea of not just the business as a whole and how it relates to kind of other players and their ability to kind of traverse the world and see what you've accomplished, but allowing players to customize the offerings that the business is capable of providing based on what they're creating as an artisanship member, um, or even what they can acquire from other players to offer through uh, their business as well. And one, one additional note here is that you know, <clears throat> freeholds are meant to be a part of the family system, meaning that to utilize the benefits the freehold and the services and mechanics that the freehold provides, it is very conducive to be part of a family with multiple members who are capable of interfacing with this. And because of that, systems like the business system allow for certain permissions to be granted to administer the business functions and that includes things like setting prices and setting types of sellables that are or services that are capable um, of being sold through the business yeah it's Very also cool. a, a great great mention there too is that the fact that you know freeholds there's there's not going to be a ton of ton of parcels all over the world you know that might not be feasible for every player to get one but even if you're uh fan if you can be a family member and you have a whole family owning a free old together it'll allow many more players to like see the system and partake in it yeah absolutely it's, it's a i i love that aspect of the freeholds now <clears throat> speaking of a tavern and um you know we've obviously talked in the past about having upgrades available uh, for these types of, of buildings. Let's use this tavern as an example um, of the types of upgrades that are possible. Talk me through this, what we're looking at here, this tree upgrade path. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll jump in. So uh, this is this is something I'm super excited about. This is, uh, you know, this is an idea that surfaced through another system that I'm sure we'll, we'll get to see in, in the future, right? And was one of those like oh well that's fun like why why can't we have that um and it just sort of played out perfectly that uh you know buildings could have upgrade paths um to to make them better or worse or more specific in a in a certain lane of specialization um based on like how, how you're trying to set up your freehold right so uh the, the idea is um you you place down uh the, the building um, and as you become more proficient in a thing, um, in the, the case of artisanship, or um, as you work within the, the business building, you could, um, you could build up the building to be better at, at some things than others. So uh, what we're looking at here is just kind of an example of that, right? Like we have this tavern, we placed it down, and uh, you know we're, we're really focused on uh, wanting people to come by here and you know gain um, extra experience or rested experience um, because it's you know maybe our our freeholds really really close to a nice hunting spot so we'll upgrade our our uh, our tavern to have these upgraded feather beds um, to, to give players that bonus right and and all of the things that you know you just went over Steven about uh, being able to set the permissions and decide mm -hmm. who, who you who you want this to apply to how expensive it should be right um, you you could be you know that guy that's got the the tavern that's that's helpful to the guild. Um, you could be the the person where people like to stop by and hang out for a bit, get the rested experience and uh, some yes. food buffs before they go out hunting, right? Um, and you know this 
allows people to you know have their freeholds next to each other and have their 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 own uh, niches um, of things that they offer to, to themselves to the people that they play with or you know to the public so absolutely cool yeah I, I i love that and and to give kind of a primer here we're looking at specifically this upgrade to the tavern type business <clears throat> which includes the ability to offer beds to weary travelers right and um, beds have a specific functionality we were talking previously about furniture's offering in-game mechanics one of those functionalities that beds provide is a rested experience buff uh, that can be applied this is obviously going to be kind of at the top tier of what travelers can expect to utilize at taverns uh, when it comes to uh, uh, these beds that's important because one other aspect of the freeholds is that freeholds are a privilege not a right meaning that there is a limited number of freeholds that will be available within the game world and that's a very important f uh, aspect of this particular feature and remember that housing exists within three different types freeholds are just one of those types of housings um, housing also exists as static in node versions as well as instanced and there's also an additional feature that we haven't i believe discussed before which is the inn um, and the inn can service as a temporary living space um, uh, that doesn't have uh, restriction on the quantity but has a soft ceiling uh, when it comes to the uh, citizenship dues that might be um, accrued at a node so if you didn't own a freehold out in a location or hunting ground where you would be participating in some type of adventuring uh, or quest, um, and you see a tavern with a bed available, you may want to make a stop there and utilize the bed so that uh, when you go out to the nearby hunting ground, you get that rested experience. And that's an important aspect of this. This is very cool. I, I, I love the aspect of the uh, of the upgrade paths and being able, able to specialize in the specific types of buildings that you construct. Now, let's say, for example, in this situation, I've constructed a, a tavern and I have specced into this tier two branch of the uh, feathered beds. If I wanted to have the uh, opposite direction in the technology branch here, um, how would I be able to service that? Would I have to stand up another tavern and then spec into that branch there? Well, well technically you'd have that option, right? Um, you could, you could, um, you could repurpose the current ter tavern that you have, or you could build yourself another tavern if you're nice. willing to give up the space and you know do more. Um, cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. And remember, yeah. one of the oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Mike. Uh, so th I just want to say there is a key point of real estate in the freehold. There is limited amount of space, right? It's yes. really up to the player to give that choice. Like, it, is this additional buffs on a new tavern building worth what I'm giving up for for another building, right? Like, that's a very interesting uh, take that players need to make to make freeholds efficient. Yeah. Right, exactly. And and just to remind you guys again. These are the systems we will be testing in Alpha 2, and it's important that you guys provide feedback across these types of systems. Tell us what you like, what you think could be done better, and as you play test them in Alpha 2, and as you watch other players play test these systems, um, afterwards that is going to be our opportunity to take the feedback and iterate on the system. Um, so it's important to kind of uh, you know focus in on these on these details. Now, <clears throat> outside of businesses, let's talk a little bit, a bit, a little bit about artisanship and more specifically um, processing as it exists within the freeholds and how the freehold ties into the artisanship as a whole, Corey. Yeah, so uh, you know, we we talked about the, the the three lanes of the buildings, right? And and artisanship is one of them. So um, the, the way that we're sort of tying that in is that each um, crafting and processing profession. Will have a building building associated with it, right? So, uh, before you can place any sort of stations down that are associated with that that crafting or processing profession, you'll have to uh, construct your building. And once the building is constructed, right, um, uh, has that that similar tech tree thing going on, right? Mm -hmm. So you can you can spec it in in the direction that you'd like it to go, and maybe that synergizes or balances out the way that you're you're specking your your profession. Um, and uh, yeah, it gives you access to placing uh, stations. It gives you access to placing more stations. Um, and then we also have um, some benefits that are conferred by the building itself to um, all of the things related on the freehold. So let's say um, there's some sort of weaponsmithing 
uh, bonus given by a weaponsmithing building. That would mean that uh, your, your weaponsmithing stations uh, on your freehold would uh, incur that bonus. So, Very cool. Yeah, I, I, I really like the aspect of, you know, some games take a direction um, that departs a bit from realism. And I think ultimately the end goal of any system that you implement into a game is to have fun, right? Is that gameplay loop there fun? Um, and I feel personally, and this is just a completely subjective opinion, but um, I feel personally when you can achieve a high degree of fun and also uh, achieve a high degree of realism in the process, that's the type of MMO experience I personally enjoy a lot. And I think that with this freehold system and emulating that realistic kind of process um, of you know what processing looks like, um, and we're going to get into a little bit of detail on that about how these processing stations work that are afforded through the processing buildings that you can construct. Um, I, I just think that's that's something that's really cool. It gets me immersed. It gets me kind of my the suspension of disbelief is really there, um, and I'm I'm just enamored by, um, you know, what that play experience is. Yeah, I totally agree. As, as a big time like factory sim player, you know, I, I love setting up these processing chains of you know raw resources to process to craft. I feel like we're going. At a, at a really fun level for players that are going to enjoy like you know going out in the world gathering taking those uh raw resources they're free to be processed and then taking that to the node to do the highest level crafting right that's just a really like uh fun and engaging loop i think absolutely yeah absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm very excited about it as well i'm i'm a, a pretty crafting artisanship focused player myself and um i I appreciate depth. And I appreciate um, yes. uh, fun, and I appreciate uh, you know co complexity to a limit, right? So this is stuff for me to think about as a player. Uh, I get to I have my own space. I get to manage that space. I get to decide you know what I want to do with it. Um, I get to yeah. decide how I want it to sy synergize with the professions I've chosen. Chosen. Um, I can make a name for myself. Um, I can make social connections by the way that I express myself as a, a whatever profession I'm into. Um, and, and Freehold is sort of, sort of a, a mecca for that, um, it, it, especially in the in the processing realm, right? Um, one of the things that I, I didn't quite touch on that's, uh, that's up here on the screen right now is that um, the, the highest level of processing happens only in the Freehold. So at the, the master and grandmaster level of processing, you'll need a Freehold to, to perform at that level. Um, and then on the on the crafting side, you know, we want the, the highest level of crafting to happen at a node. So um, players will be able to craft on, on their freeholds, but uh, the, the max that you'll be able to progress to is a, a journeyman level. Awesome. Very cool. Well, speaking of processing, talk to us a little bit about the process of processing. Yeah, we'll do. So, um, so uh, uh, Processing, each processing profession will have uh, four stations um, and the, the stations will um, come online as you progress through the profession. Um, each one of those stations will make goods that are immediately uh, useful uh, to, to the economy, to um, crafters, to other processors. Um, and each uh, processing station will um, build on itself and in, into the other stations, right? So. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll end up kind of at, at the end, um, if you, if you do end up, you know, going all the way to master or grandmaster, um, being able to kind of circle between the stations and, and make different stuff, um, depending on what you want to make. Um, uh, so in addition to, um, using kind of resources in, in your recipes, uh, we also want, to, uh, we want to use fuel. Um, as a way I to uh, run your station. Um, yeah, that's super cool. The the fuel is a is a, I think an awesome kind of talking a little bit about again that 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 realistic kind of process. I really love the addition of the fuel and kind of the complexity as that fuel interacts with the type of processed good that you're creating. I think that's a really cool system. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like players are. I feel like uh, players are definitely used to that. With like, for example, like iron ore. For example, you'd expect that to you know require some coal, some wood pellets, right, to complete that recipe. But even I think that's just gonna be something where I'm gonna core to processing, where uh, any recipe you'll do is gonna require some level of fuel. So even like at a sawmill, right, processing your lumber, you will also require fuel to run, and that's kind of gonna be something players will learn about. Learn what are good fuels, what resources can work as a fuel, and what's 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 uh, the meta there. 
Yeah, definitely getting dialed in with the economy and understanding, you know, what's the price efficiency of using, you know, wood chips versus coal for, you know, a particular recipe and kind of looking at uh, what your your returns are based on those decisions is just like, it's, it's so cool that you even get to think about any of those things, right? Um, and then just within the fuel, fuel itself, right? Um, like, so the, the way that we're going with the with the fuel is kind of any any item can have a fuel value on it, right? So, um, and then when you're when you're putting together, you know, your your job to you know make you know 100 iron ingots, right? There'll be some sort of value that's required to 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 process that job. So, it'll be up to you to choose you know the fuel types that you want to. Let's say that it, it costs 100 fuel to to make those uh, 100 ingots. Uh, you can make whatever fuel combination you you want uh, to to fulfill that value. So, yeah, you might have sure. like you know a mostly amount of coal, but then you're like, ah, I need I need to throw some extra wood chips in there, right, to finish the finish the recipe off. Or, or you might have a really high quality like refined fuel you've made, and that that'll that one fool will be able to do many many jobs and before it depletes itself. So there's a lot of a lot of freedom players have there in ter- determining how they power their station. Love it, <clears throat> and obviously I didn't mention this before, but what you guys are seeing and uh, you know uh this is an important part to give feedback in you know how do you like this format of a presentation when we get into these more systems heavy kind of uh um designs um but the art here is as i said the concept art ryan richmond and his team and, and mike vecchio and um and, and lloyd and jeff and you know they all do a great job in providing the rest of our development team the concepts that give direction on you know what to strive for when modeling these assets and creating these environments uh they just do a phenomenal job so kudos to them all right so, uh, so Oh, Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I want to point out one thing that certain stations will have the benefits and certain buildings will also have a benefit and that using those benefits depending on the quality of the station and the tier of the station like some, some of these fuel costs could be reduced right if your station is very efficient at um, melting iron for example right then the fuel costs of that recipe might reduce quite a bit. And also, I'm coming back to the real estate thing again. Sorry. <laughs> where, no, yeah, <laughs> where if you just because you have an artisanship building that doesn't necessarily mean you get to have all the stations right if you want to be best at everything that you will require multiple artisanship buildings and if you want access to every stations that you also require a lot of uh, artisanship buildings and then you can kind of tech up to be very focused on one or have all the artisanship buildings that you can possibly have want for one specific processing and be the best at it right yeah absolutely The, the, the It's a progressive amount of investment required in order to be the best. Um, And, you know, these systems are designed with progression in mind because that depth, that progression, as as Corey was speaking earlier, is what makes a lot of these systems compelling, right, to a degree. So let's talk a little bit about the depth and progression when it comes to the lumber mill. Uh, This is an example of an artisanship building, specifically a processing building. Um, Corey, talk to me a little bit about what we're looking at here. Yeah, so this this is a you know ex- example similar to what we were looking at with the tavern, um, uh, but sort of following a, a lumber mill, right? Like players will will need to play, place a lumber mill to uh, advance in their lumber lumber milling profession, um, and you'll be able to kind of spec it um, based on what you want to focus on as as a as a lumber miller. So um, what we're looking at here is this you know arcane golem, and um, you know it it allows you to process. Uh, uh, let's see, process jobs reducing resource, and the fuel and gold cost of processing is dropped by 20%, right? So this one's sort of focusing on uh, cost and efficiency, and there might be other lanes or uh, other other particular uh, skills that you can pick up that might uh, focus on more yield, um, uh, uh, maybe rarity procs, um, stuff like that, right? So uh, what, yeah. what's really interesting is that you can kind of take take these trees um, and apply it to your, your skill tree um, in your profession and sort of, you know, uh, balance or, you know, hyper focus or uh, fill in uh, fill in uh, the, the gaps that you're missing as you progress. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And as you can see, the Arcane Golem is kind of like the final, like ultimate uh, end talent at this at this uh this specific skill tree and so you can see on the bottom left there's already you know a couple different active upgrades that are already applying bonuses to all the stations on the freehold that are related to the lumber mill so you see we have double saw improved permit gear system station main stuff like that so it'll be a kind of a culmination once you fully spec out your building it'll have a variety of benefits it'll be adding to those stations. and as you kind of spec into these specific 
um, uh, types of, of upgrades. Um, the building itself <clears throat> manifests props and attachments to it uh, that represent these different upgrade paths. So it's a, it's a really kind of cool thing to see um, exist kind of on the freehold. It gives also indication to the other players as, as to what specializations you focused on. Yeah, definitely. Like it, that same, we're, we're hoping to get that same feeling where you know you walk by that person and you're like, "Holy shit, that's that sword." Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, you could you could walk by someone's tavern and be like, "Oh, they got the the bar in the window. Like I can just roll up there and get myself a, a quick snack and a drink, and um, you know, head out out head on out to the to the hunting grounds." Or you know, um, they they went down a certain path for the the lumber wheel, wheel upgrade and. They know that this is probably the processor that you want to reach out to for your for all of your uh, uh, wood needs. Yes, absolutely. Well, <clears throat> so guys, as as we said, this was a little bit of an experiment, kind of prefacing uh, this particular system, the freehold system, uh, before we get in game and and take a look. Uh, Bucky, I think you have a freehold somewhere in the Riverlands, perhaps by some some interesting mining options. Uh, that we're going to take a look at now. Hopefully we don't get killed on the way. Um, but give us your feedback on what you enjoyed or thought could have been done better uh, about this PowerPoint kind of presentation of the system so that we get a little bit more nitty-gritty details um, of this. And we're going to do some Q&A after the gameplay. Uh, but right now, let's talk a little bit about and go in-game and, and, and take a look at some farming. Let's take a look at the livestock and those interactions because I know that those two specific interactions on freeholds is near and dear to a lot of different players hearts um, and then in addition there's going to be a little bit of discussion about our inventory management system we've i've told you a little bit in the past that we have gone with a kind of tetra styled inventory when it comes to materials and raw gatherables <clears throat> so we're going to take a look the first iteration of that of course everything here is a work in progress we are still active in development towards alpha 2 um, so take everything you see with a grain of salt but obviously participate on our forums on social media channels um, here in twitch on the things you're liking in the, what you've seen and what you would like to see done differently um, <clears throat> one other thing i think we're going to take a look at when we get in there is some of the housing some of the furniture uh, interacting with uh, with some of that furniture as well um, you might even get a look at a, a new little mount but let's switch over to in-game and we will see you guys in just a second Hello, everyone, and we find ourselves now in the world of Vera once again. And, uh, Bucky, I think you were talking a little bit about a freehold that you have nearby in the Riverlands here, where we're going to perhaps uh, participate in some of your... What do you got on that freehold? What are you doing over there? So we got a lot of uh, farming stuff, mainly is what we're focusing on. But we also have a uh, artisan building as well. Oh, nice. As a forge station, because we got such, some good mining opportunities out here. Okay, so. very cool. And uh, I see you kind of are close to this, this kind of these ruins with your freehold, I guess. Is there any happening spots around this area for you guys? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we got some we got some mob packs around here. Players are coming through here a lot Ooh. to, you know, obviously get the uh, yeah this nice resource here. We got some uh, alaconite. Is that why you you formed your freehold near the these this precious resource? Talk to me a little bit about this this resource, uh, Corey and and or Mike. Oh yeah, that's uh, so. This is halcyonite. It's a uh, kind of a uh, mid tier journeyman um, a gem. Um, and yeah, it's just got sort of a, a something you would use in, in, in weapons and for decorations, nice. jewelry. So it's pretty pretty sought after um, for a lot of crafts. So that's pretty valuable. I love the uh, I love just its look. I mean, it adds a really kind of um, magical uh, blues to this area. Wow, this is a beautiful. Now, Bucky, I know why you made your freehold here. This is a beautiful view. Yep, just another beautiful day in Vera. Oh my gosh. Do you ever get, like, afraid of heights here? I mean, this is kind of crazy. 
I think That'd actually I might have something that could help you with this. Hold on, let me see. I can just bring it up here, and then if you ever need to use it one day, feel free to. You're more than welcome. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Perfect. Oh, yeah. it's even on theme for the fall weather. I know. Exactly. It's a drink of the canopy. Perfect. Yeah, if you ever want to take them for a spin, just let me know. Okay. All right. But, uh, yeah. There you go. Actually, I'll put him away. He, he's kind of he afraid is. of heights himself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I can mine this. So I've maxed out... Um, my artisanship levels through a little bit of a cheat, but uh, if you have the tools and, oops, do I have the tools? Okay, guys, you're seeing a little bit of a, a preview of some of the work in progress UI with the artisanship windows, and obviously you have a number of tools here that are possible. This UI, of course, is getting completely revamped. This is just kind of the the, um, uh, the wireframing for it, but talk to me a little bit about the tool setup. W why is it important to have these kind of tools? How do tools aid you in your gathering adventures? Yeah, so um, so uh, each uh, gathering profession will have three tools. Um, the tools kind of come li online as you progress through the profession, uh, and the different uh, resource types for each one of the profession may require different tools. So um, you, you basically want to carry around the, the right tool for the job, um, and uh, tools, uh, along with uh, artisanship gear, will have stats on it. So um, you can itemize towards uh, how you want to gather, how fast you want to gather. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, it looks great. I love the the uh, <clears throat> the destruction of the a actual, like, uh, is it Halcyonite? Halcyonite? What is Halcyonite. Halcyonite. Yeah, Halcyonite. Halcyonite. Yeah, I mean, nice. we sort of set the precedent with the trees, right? So... Um, we're, we're trying to get uh, similar feelings uh, that, that the trees bring with our with our other uh, gatherables. Yeah, yeah, it's looking great. Now, where is where is your freehold? Uh, it's just over this hill here, off to the left of the path. I think you might be able to see my uh, yeah. the house there with the chimney smoke Ooh, as well. Okay. Off there, see it? Yeah, that looks good. How do we let's let's get over there a little bit faster? Maybe we can. Uh, oh yeah. What do we got? Oh, I don't think people have seen the. Uh, Lightfoot yet. Nice. Let's bring him out. Oh, look at him. How cool is that? Oh, he looks so good. I love the eyes. Super cool. Do we know who did this one? Was this Jinsey? I, I think I believe Jinsey, it was a Jinsey, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. This guy's fast. It's high speed. Is a rabbit after all, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. Wait, we gotta slow it down a little bit. We gotta I can't approach at such fast pace to your to your freehold. That would be disrespectful. I apologize. Oh, yes. Here Thank you. Go. Don't That's... trample my plants, please. You know? Oh, perfect. <laughs> this is great. The horde of rabbits. So, what have you geared? It looks like I mean, you don't have a lot of buildings on the freehold. Uh, for yours, Bucky, is that because you're kind of trying to utilize the land for farming and and I know, of course, you are Doctor Bucky, so the animal husbandry system and like That's livestock. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah, so I I sacrificed some of the space I could have used for buildings to just have more farm space, basically. So, as you can see here, we got some you know we got some sheep, we got some cows and pigs, and we got some chickens back there, and we have a lot of space for different farmables. So. We have uh, wheat here, corn, and then the tomatoes over there as well. Oh, this looks great. So <clears throat> now, Mike, when we're talking about, you know, these types of farmable spaces, obviously, as we discussed previously, you know, the customization options for your freehold um, are really kind of up to you and what you want to delve into on the processing side of things and how you want to use the space. But players who want to participate in the farming, talk to me a little bit about that system. I mean the intent <coughs> excuse me to provide this open area space for people to utilize just growing different crop rotations and the livestock and how does that feed the the general processing system yeah so the farming is going to generally focus on uh growing crops like this and then dealing with livestock over there like that um but oh, nice. generally what you want to do is get, gather some seeds from either vendor or uh, in the world, you can gather or find some seeds on the uh, open content, and you're going to come to your freehold, um, plant them, um, and then depending on what kind of processing level you have and what kind of processing stations or buildings you might have, you might grow crops like a little faster. Nice. 
produce like better crop rotations and just generally farm things that's unique to farming produce like um compared to the in the open world yeah so um, i mean i just got a bunch of wheat by the way i apologize bucky on stealing your wheat <laughs> but uh I no, go for it. I got plenty. It's it's harvest season. You know, we got a big crop coming. I need some help uh, getting all the harvest done. Yeah, it looks super cool. Yeah, another cool thing about farming, too, since it has the, the livestock, um, is that it kind of feeds directly into to hunting and synergizes with uh, animal husbandry. So um, if you're interested in, in um, raising animals, taming animals, um, you know, farmers will have a, a use for them. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, animal husbandry has multiple lanes of uh, ways to breed and specialize your creatures and uh, mounts and pets are one of the more popular ones, but then obviously livestock as well. So not only can you breed your animals for traits such as like movement speed and health and different combat stats, but you also be able to breed them for desirable traits like, you know, fertility, increased harvesting yield, and even uh, increased yield from butchering. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Oh my god, that is awesome. This is, this is, uh, this is <laughs> makes them more comfortable with you taking god. their eggs away, so <laughs> Leave our eggs alone. Morale. Yeah, they, they won't peck us if we come uh, uh, with their uh, style here. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, I just got some eggs. Okay, now one of the other things that we wanted to obviously collect player feedback on, and I'm going to open up the inventory um, just to kind of take a look at the materials uh resource bag talk to me a little bit about how we are implementing resources differently from your general item inventory um so we're taking an approach from other games um but the idea of resource is gonna have somewhat of a slot base uh, instead of having a slot based like traditional MMO, we're going to look for like a Tetris kind of idea of having different shapes and different um, stack sizes kind of like that to make some interesting choices out in the world where you have to do inventory management and have a pick and choose depending on like what, what you have available, what kind of bags you have. Now, I seem to have kind of run out of space. Uh, maybe I can grab... Do you have any... Oh, yeah. If you want, you can come uh, put some stuff in the chest in the house or... Uh, Ooh, are your bags okay. too small or what's... Yeah, no, I, I only yeah. have one bag. It's called a Sanctus Resource Bag. Oh, yeah. I got some extra bags for you, actually. You could take some around my chest. Oh, this, some is, a, this is a nicely decorated home here. Thank oh, you, you have the... Uh, you have the... Oh, man, I can't remember what we called this, but this was for the... Um, pandemic everyone who mm. i think registered prior to a certain date during the pandemic margaret will know um we granted this item to people or will be granted to people that's cool it's modeled look at that i think ryan richmond actually did the modeling for that and then john uh Wainick did the implementation very cool that looks awesome yeah where's, i love it where's the chest i can grab uh right here by the fireplace oh okay sweet let me see here the materials oh okay all right, so uh, what do I do here? Just grab this. Let they me... just take them all and swap it out, I think. I'll equip them. Okay, cool. I have some. Now, this is obviously work in progress uh, UI. This is not the final UI, but this kind of demonstrates the functionality of the system. <coughs> Let me go over here. What can I do with these sheep? Uh, you can harvest them for uh, wool, shoot them. All right. Is, this is not going to hurt them, is it? No. No. Okay. If you Hello. do a good job. Oh, pretty Shearing sheep. Is a non pretty crop. sheep. Yes. Give me your wool. Yeah. Oh, it I, gave me some wool, I and now it's naked. That's so sad. Yeah, it'll grow back. Oh, how? So, so talk. To, perfect. That's a good point. So it'll grow back. Talk to me a little bit about kind of you know the intent behind the the livestock here and the crops as well like you're planting and you're placing these livestock uh on farmable space within the within your freehold and then over time they mature and become processable or how does that work oh yeah that's pretty much exactly it um certain certain things like for the crops for example you need to acquire seeds first um, which can be acquired through a number of ways but once you plant them uh, you'll have to water them and care for them, and then after a certain point, depending on the crop itself, uh, 
would be when you can harvest them and then you can replant them at that point. And then for animals, uh, different animals have different, you know, sort of byproducts they can get. Like, so for example, from here from the cow, you could you can milk them and get some uh, fresh oh milk. Oh my god. But the, they have horns. Are these, are these the right cows? Oh, there's, there's udders. There's, oh, there's udders, udders down there. Oh, okay. All right. There's udders. Okay. Well, let's see. <laughs> oh, I got to lick a little stool. Wow, that's some <laughs> rapid-paced milking. Holy smokes. Yeah, you know. <laughs> That was crazy. Hold on, let me make sure I got the milk. Oh, we did get the milk. Let me pull it down here. Pull some corn down as well. Do make some uh, reorganization space. there. Yeah, kind of just reorganizing things. Yeah, another yeah. sort of interesting thing that you'll see with you know livestock and other types of things that you can gather is um, uh, you'll be able to kind of choose the things that you want to gather from it, right? Um, Bucky had mentioned animal byproducts, right? And, you know, milk is a byproduct of a cow and, you know, so is beef. So um, it's up to you kind of how and when you want to harvest your livestock in certain ways. And, uh, you know, same same with plants. Uh, maybe you want to, you know, take take the corn and maybe you want to cut down the, the entire uh, uh, corn plant um, to make room for other crops and, you know, uh, there's different byproducts depending on how you interact with that gatherable. So. Now this is going to be <clears throat> another point of good player feedback. So one, we kind of talked to you and showed you guys a little bit of the uh, systems for planting uh, crops on your freehold, uh, for uh, uh, raising livestock, collecting resources from them. Um, this uh, and then the Tetris inventory type system. Um, but this one is more game philosophy slash immersion right and uh what you're going to see now i think for those of you who are a bit squeamish um if you want to turn away understandable but we're gonna get some <coughs> leather and what yep. else from this guy Hide. meat um yeah some yeah, kind of some meat kind of whatever hide. you'd expect from a pig yep bacon uh, all right, well, all right, I apologize, little buddy. I'm you super had a sorry. good long life. You did have a good long life. A happy life on the farm, and now... Oh, God, go to sleep. <laughs> now... Oh, we got the hide and the meat! But it's... Oh, that's sad. Is it it's just, it's just sleeping? Is it tired? That was intense. Yeah, 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 for it's sure. Just, it's sleeping. It's sleeping, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. Let's go, uh, yeah. Nothing to see uh, here. Oh. <laughs> sorry, little piglets. <laughs> oh, no, not the piglets! Okay. No. We'll take good care of you. No, let them let them live a little bit of a life. One day you'll become big, and then we'll. Uh, oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, that's a that's a great point of player feedback. Talk to us a little bit about how real slash immersive do you want it to be, or do you prefer that uh, perhaps the pigs don't die, but rather they just go to sleep? Um, that's that's a good question, I think, for for a lot of people to give their thoughts on. Okay, so now now we have. Um, I'm seeing over here, there's another building. Obviously, we have the, the home here that we w went inside a little bit. This other building, talk to me a little bit about that. We talked a little bit in the um, presentation about um, the profession buildings and them giving access to workstations. What do we have here? So this is the um, <clears throat> artisan building that we talked about. Um, and then these give general benefits to the freehold. Um, it could be profession specific, it could be just general specific, but it also gives you like access to putting down stations like this. So this would be the metalworking station. Oh, nice. Okay. And I see that uh, this, this station's pretty, pretty intensive. And, and that's, I think, something we're going to be showing in a future stream, which is all about the crafting process and the recipe acquisition and the tools, but also, um, a little bit of a gameplay layer that Corey, Mike, you guys have been working on with crafting um, in the future that we're going to show. But this one's all about processing. And tell me, talk to me a little bit about, we talked a little bit about um, what it takes to go into the fuel, to prep the station, to do the processed goods, and then kind of leaving and letting that, you know, process over time. Um, do you expect that players are going to want to, like, fully kit out their freeholds with... Uh, the profession building so they have access to all the stations what would be the benefit of that um, I, I i think so right like um, if players are really interested in um investing in, in processing right um you know 
uh, free holds are supposed to kind of give the players the the furthest reach up to the highest tiers of processing processing so if you want to you know allocate most of your space in your rehold in your freehold for um uh you know processing buildings processing mm -hmm. stations uh you could you could create like kind of your your own processing plant or or factory um and really sort of you know have a have a stranglehold on a market or um particular goods so uh, the, the freehold is supposed to be free space for players to kind of do whatever they'd like you know dec decorate um, housing have businesses um, or create a you know uh, processing empire so cool very cool well i did get some <clears throat> some supplies whoops i did get some supplies uh bucky do you want me to like put this in the chest or anything or yeah yeah you can just empty out and store it here in my chest for now oh, so you can go out and... plants Oh, yep. yeah, yeah, that's right. I forgot to harvest these. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. Get some other ones here. Very nice. Oh, some more exploded. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, you got them at least, right? Yeah, 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 we did. Yeah, we're, we're good. All right, let me go put this inside. Wait, let me make sure I actually did get the tomatoes. You probably got a full bag at this point, almost. Did I? Oh, I did get some tomatoes. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right, I'm going to go put this right in. here. I'm going to go put this in for you. Now... You've obviously done a great job with the inter with the decorations here on the furniture, um, and you know we don't intend furniture to obviously just be visual aspect of the interior, but functional as well. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, so obviously we've seen here the chest, right? The chest is a placeable furniture prop that actually increases the storage capacity of your of your freehold uh, property. But we're going to have a variety of, you know, other functional furnitures, like besides just even the artisanship stations. So, for example, we have a bed over here, which you'll be able to uh, sleep in as well. Get some rest experience, perhaps. Also, we'll have chairs. Those are just like kind of cosmetic you'll be able to sit in. And uh, but yeah, there'll be a variety of functional uh, prop items as well that will have actual gameplay uh, uses. Nice. That's awesome. Let's see. I'm just putting all this stuff into the... Uh, into the into your uh, storage chest so you have it very um, nice I free labor you, i see you have some pictures in here as well yep yep that's the picture i uh, commissioned to myself I'm just oh is this it is that is that you yes <laughs> it is actual bucky. me in armor <laughs> it's actual bucky <laughs> <laughs> that is so great I think this is your favorite, Steven. Yes, mm -hmm. yep. the sandals. Another oh, that's classic. so awesome. That is super cool. Now, obviously, players that we talked a little bit about um, businesses and how players can kind of stand up different taverns and whatnot. And Bucky, you had stated like one of the reasons why you wanted to have your freehold here in this location was because of some of the access to the rare resources. But there's also some interesting hunting grounds nearby. Um, and, you know, one of the things that is interesting about the freehold system is that it's not just architected for processing but it can also be a profitable location based on where uh, and what you're providing other players access to from a like drink and food tavern perspective right? yeah we, we mentioned that before like there's um business types of buildings that you can build um some of these could be very region specific like if there was a hunting ground nearby that is very populated we could set up a tavern sell like uh, food buffs and drinks that is really good for xp bonuses or increase to your um, loot chance or something like that whatever that may increase some kind of a benefit to the player that is um good business like i said um would be set up here where you could just get um uh, take advantage of the populated uh, uh, player area that's awesome that's super cool i love it <clears throat> and you were saying um you know obviously having access to an open world where you're not necessarily restricted to the locations that you can place these freeholds, but allowing the players to kind of place them themselves. Um, obviously, we are going to block out certain areas that can't be placed, like certain road networks and POIs, but generally the intent is to, to provide these freeholds uh, as layable plots in the open world. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So as long as you uh, purchase a certificate from the uh, owning node of the land, you'll be able to place it in 
many places around the node, like just basically anywhere that's not like a uh, you know dungeon or a point of interest with monsters, you'll be able to place in a lot of areas. So players will have a lot of freedom in choosing where they want to uh, build build their field and lay down their their plot. So it'll be a big like obviously here, like we you, you said, I was looking at the you know we got the mines over there, we got the point of interest, but we also have this large flat area for a lot of farming, and so it's it was kind of a good mix for this freehold. Yeah. Super cool. Love it. Bucky, you have a very cool freehold. You know, I think I'm getting a little bit tired. Can I... Mind if I just take a little nap, you know? Oh, sure, yeah. I mean, just it's a great, great cool? bed. You'll get some rested experience. It'll be perfect. I, um, I was concerned a little bit with the nearby enemy populations, perhaps. Maybe you guys can keep watch over me as I go to sleep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Don't worry. You'll be... You'll be safe. We'll uh, be set safe up a guard. <laughs> well, everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, brief look at Bucky's Freehold. A little bit about the um, processing for uh, livestock as well as uh, crops and um, take a look at the new mount, some of the resources that are placed around the Riverlands area, um, and also a little look at the uh, housing system with some of the furniture that you have access to kind of use and provide a little bit of benefit that you have access to for your gameplay. And with that being said, I think we'll wish you all adieu and a good night, and we will see you next time. Thank you guys for joining us. Later! Thank you for having us. Bye, Bye. guys! Hello, everybody. I'm going to be playing the video in the background while we answer some preliminary <laughs> questions because we know there was a lot of thoughts <laughs> and clarifications that we want to make. Um, you're muted, Stephen. Uh oh, there we go. I think I heard something. Technical Can you hear me? Difficulty. Testing? Yeah, yeah, you're good. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. I said, I feel like after that, we all need to get up and do a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> just kind of move around a little bit <laughs> i know it was a long one that's why i told everybody bring your snacks yes. strap in uh we got a lot more to show um, and of course we want to do some clarifications um the first one is that we will have the gameplay video part of it in 4k up on youtube after this live stream and then the yes. full video will be up the full dev update should be up tomorrow pending technology and youtube cooperate with us and twitch <laughs> um yeah. but you wanted to make some clarifications on the predetermined aspects yeah absolutely so um i want to kind of clarify the way that the predetermined uh parcels work versus laying down the freehold where you wish right so essentially <clears throat> each zone of influence in the world has designated large swaths of land that act sort of as these parcels that can be catered to specific like points of interest or thematically you know relevant and you might want to bid on that that kind of almost county size area where you then get to place your freehold right <clears throat> and once you have bid on those uh, that area at the node then you can acquire the um, the freehold plot, uh, and you go out into that zone, that section that you have bid on and acquired, and you place your freehold footprint, which is a, previously we had set the freehold size to about a half an acre. However, recently that's changed. Well, not recently. A, a while ago that changed to be one and a half acres, or roughly 100 by 60. And of course, we're still in development, so things might change, you know, continually. Just general disclaimer: as in development, these systems are subject to change. So, right now they're about one and a half acres. So you go out there and you go to that predetermined slice of land that's very large. You know, it's many, many, many acres. And then you choose where you want to place your plot for the freehold. That's about a ha one and a half acres. And then on that plot, you get blueprints for buildings like your house and the and the um, artisanship buildings or businesses. And you place those blueprints down on the plot that you placed, um, and you construct them with materials. I think some people have concerns about the bidding aspect of freeholds. But, oh yeah, um... yeah, sure. No, so so bidding is essentially <clears throat> once you've completed a quest uh, in order to 
a bid, right? It's kind of like a little bit of a, a lordship quest, right? Where like, you know, you're entitled to own this land, so to speak. You've proven yourself worthy for the node to grant you this parcel's um, uh, a deed. Um, <clears throat> then on a regular cadence, especially at the inception or the beginning of a node, a number of those parcels will be available to bid for. Um, and players who bid and win that bid then get to place their freehold on that on that section of the world, right? Um, and the idea is is to remember that like nodes are built up and nodes can fall through the destruction of either um, atrophy events or sieges. And when that happens, these freeholds can be subject to destruction. Uh, and if a new node develops, uh, then that cyclical kind of recycling of these uh, locations become available again. Yeah, no. <laughs> I think people are like, it's too real having to compete <laughs> for housing. Um, yes. Well, next, and remember, uh, freeholds are just one form of three different, technically now four with the ends, three different types of housing. So freeholds are are really the ultimate um, level of you know process oriented or artisan artisanship oriented um, housing type. Um, but there's also static in node housing, and there's uh, apartments as well. Yeah. And okay. Next up, we've got. Uh, Clarification that we'll be putting out an article for freehold building cosmetic concerns. I know there was a lot of concerns in regards to that um, to make things a little bit more clear. And we'll also be updating to item descriptions as well in inventory. But um, one of the main things that people had noted was if freeholds are going to be limited, what happens if I bought a freehold building cosmetic? And I know you wanted to address that, Stephen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so in the same sense that we've done flying mounts, uh, types of cosmetics and or tier two mounts, these require you to acquire them. And there are many ways to acquire a freehold, not just through the quest system, first come, first serve on a per node basis, but you can also sell and purchase a freehold as well. Now, again, freeholds are restricted to one per account. So if you're going to acquire a freehold and then sell it, you can only sell it to an account that doesn't already own a freehold. Um, so <clears throat> because these and you are relative- you yes. one to sell. Correct. That's yeah. correct. And because these um, these freeholds are an integral component of the artisanship system, fulfilling kind of the best processing that's available within Ashes of Creation, um, these are constantly going to be coming up for sale. We're establishing kind of a real estate market that players can invest in and then sell uh, within the in-game economy. Um, but also they are a resource that's subject to removal through the sieging system as well. Right, so there's a bit of risk implied there. Um, but the idea is that <clears throat> this is something for players to strive for and to achieve, those who wish to to achieve this. Um, and anyone who sets their mind to it or sets it to their goal to work up either enough money in game to purchase a freehold from another player or um, is is at a node where a freehold's available and you've developed your you know personal holdings to acquire one through the bidding system, um, or if you become a member of a family, um, those are all methods by which you can have access to the freehold and then utilize your cosmetics for the uh, uh, for the uh, the buildings. Okay, and then this kind and of and by the way, perfectly. just oh, just as real quick, I just want to state something. We took this different approach with the presentation and the PowerPoint side of things because this is a very in depth hefty system and this is very hefty when it comes to design detail and anytime we get into a discussion about a system this intricate there's a lot of opportunity for miscommunication misinformation misunderstanding in how these systems work so um, that's why, as Margaret said at the beginning of the stream, I am scheduled for a, a live Q&A yeah. uh, uh, next week uh, um, and then uh, also one, another one next month that we'll be announcing soon um, where I'm going to have an opportunity to kind of chat with the community. And I'll probably jump on Discord after stream as well for maybe an hour. So we'll see how my schedule looks. It's probably a nightmare. But um, I know, so I know, I know. <laughs> I looked. <laughs> I know. Um, and I'll try to answer some questions as uh, uh, in Discord as well. So <clears throat> <clears throat> and you know, um, Roshan and 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 Cody, they'll be they'll be assisting with that as well on the community side. So, Roshan and yes. Buckner have been answering a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you answered one of them already. And then uh people would like 
it kind of goes hand in hand with what you were just talking about. If you could talk a little bit more about freehold permissions, uh, specifically one of the questions was, can people harvest from your freehold without permissions? Um, can no. they steal from your freehold? No, um, they people cannot steal from your freehold. They cannot harvest without your permission. Um, you can have, uh, if you're unfamiliar with the family system, take a little bit of a look at that. Of course, the Ashes Wiki is a great uh, location of um, uh, resources need some and updating. knowledge. Though. I know, I know. A lot, well, <laughs> a lot has changed. <laughs> uh, remember, as we draw closer to testing dates, uh, these systems get iterations that can happen very rapidly as we're either internally playtesting or as other systems change that m facilitate a need to make changes within uh, other ancillary systems. You know, those changes can occur. That's That's part of the... Um, the player contract, so to speak, with a live development is that <clears throat> understanding must be expressed on kind of the ability for these things to change over time, because ultimately we're trying to build the best possible systems, the best possible game for you guys to enjoy. And it all needs to make sense together. And MMOs are uh, an, an accumulation of many different types of games in one. Um, and that's what makes them so unique. So, yeah. All right. And then can players be denied from buying a freehold from other players or uh, buy proper property anonymously? No. Not really. Okay. And then Megaballin, which I think is a funny name. Uh, will nice. rare blueprints have benefits beyond just appearance? Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah. The blueprints, blueprints are the vehicle for which um, unique... Uh, uh, mechanical properties or in-game properties um, are uh, delivered to the player. So buildings can have certain types of buffs and passive benefits that are conferred based on the quality of the uh, blueprint that's been acquired. So the rarer the blueprint, the, the more powerful its effect. Okay. And then does freehold size determine how much stuff can be put inside? How does a cosmetics can impact how many things or the location of where things can be placed? Good call. So <clears throat> um, cosmetics that are, are very large in size, we will have a system. It's not been developed yet, but we've been planning for this. We'll have a system where multiple buildings can be occupied space-wise by the larger cosmetic. So a cosmetic might replace the visual appearance of one particular building, but then you'll be able to have that footprint occupy multiple buildings to replace the visual appearance of, right? So that way you're you're still utilizing the similar amount of space. And yes, when you talk about the kind of management system of the freehold, it is entailed in two parts. One is a permitting system that allows for a specific number of different types of buildings that can be allotted on the freehold and constructed. That needs to be acquired through the node in which you've attained the uh, freehold certificate. And the, uh, the other side of that is the space constraint as well, because whatever space you're not using on the freehold for a building plot or location can be utilized for other purposes, as you saw in the in-game uh, presentation, uh, such as livestock placement, crop placements and rotations, uh, as well as other uh, types of placeables. All right. And then the question here was, are there plans to replace REST XP when, with a, another benefit as the servers mature and majority of players are already max level? Um, not at the moment, no. No, right now the the beds are primarily servicing a REST experience function. Um, of course, there are obviously opportunities where additional tech tree structures could be provided or additional items might get released with expansions uh, that have uh, uh, different types of benefits conferred to that particular type of furniture. Um, but at the moment, that's not in the plan. Are the upgraded, uh, are the upgrade slash skills, sorry, my camera is dripping out. Um, That's okay. I, I took the Elgato update and now it's just borked my camera. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are the upgrades slash skill trees, tree buildings or profession specific? Can you reset the trees at, at a cost? Uh, you you absolutely um, you I believe you can actually change the tree spec at a cost, um, and the upgrades are specific to the building. Um, uh, the upgrade paths are specific to the building. All right, and then will there be furniture loot in drop tables? If so, will they be common or rare drops with unique designs? There 
there will be components uh, of unique furniture recipes um, that are dropped and are rare. Um, and those again will scale uh, based on the rarity uh, and the power it confers to the specific type of furniture it constru constructs. And can married couples co-own a freehold? Uh, no, the uh, freehold ownership is designated by one account only. And then the family system is the system that facilitates multiple accounts having permission base uh, basis within that freehold. And we will have more questions, but they're in the Q&A segment from, pulled from our forums, but they will yes. be freehold specific. And I, I want to... Oh, go ahead. Uh, real quick, I just want to give a, one other uh, commentary about an additional system that you guys got an early insight and early look uh, at, which is the inventory uh, system. And I want to give some clarifying commentary on the purpose and the design for that inventory system. So <clears throat> first of all, inventory is split into two separate management systems. The first is your non-material, non-gatherable uh, uh, slots. Those are your standard single slot, non, um, um, uh, not space constrained system, right? That's a standard inventory. You just have a single slot and you, you can pull completed items and or consumables and you know quest items or whatever into that slot, right? And then when you're talking about materials specifically, uh, processed goods um, and uh, gatherables, those exist within <clears throat> the Tetris type uh, inventory system. And the purpose for that is there is a, and this is, you're seeing a very early representation of the UI there. Um, this is not the uh, the final UI, nor is it even the um, existing kind of uh, UX design that we want to facilitate with uh, ease of access into that system. This is just kind of functional currently. Um, but <clears throat> what we want to achieve with that is because everything in the world is generally uh, 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 harvestable, a resource that, uh, that could be harvested, we want to have very unique progression when it comes to the construction of, of resource bags, right? And those resource bags will have certain benefits like um, increasing stack size count of particular types of resources or um, of having uh, uh, additional delay time necessary to interface with a, with your corpse should a player try to take the resources you might have dropped in PvP, um, or having passive benefits and unique structures of spacing that makes it more a better bag for wood gathering because woods are three by one, or a better bag for mining because you know mining is always a f uh, two by two. Like the idea is to make your intent as a gatherer when you go out into the wild, specific, right? Not just that you're going out into the wild and gathering everything you can because it's there and that's what we don't have like a labor system that limits it, right? We have a space constraint system. So when you leave your node and you go out into the wild, you need to be conscientious of what you're choosing to interact with and, and take resources for because you have a limited space uh, constraint to that degree. And we think it's an, an, an interesting system that ties into, as you guys will see later, um, uh, the caravans and crates system as well. All right. Um, and do note that anything that we've talked about today, we would love feedback on. We will have a, a freehold updates live stream uh, thread that will go up. It might be up right now. I don't know how quickly Wagner is working to push that up. Um, but definitely go head on over to our forums. Give us feedback. We'll be compiling that and uh, sending it yonder to our development team. They've been loving all of the uh, reports that we've been putting together. And your guys' feedback has been super valuable. It makes sure that we're, you know, on the right page as far as we move forward. A lot of the things that you guys want are things we're already planning to do, uh, which is very exciting. And it also kind of makes sure that we're um, making the right design choices. And if you guys see any flaws or holes in those things, we'd love to see uh, what your thoughts are. And especially as you get into Alpha 2, that's when you're going to get your hands on it and you're going to be able to provide like the juicy feedback. But preliminary, we would love to know what your guys' thoughts are. Um, with that, we've got quite a bit of art updates to showcase, so we'll move on to that. And then I know that folks are curious about some studio updates that have happened this month. <laughs> so we'll move on to art. 
You saw that we had some cow milking set up there that Stephen was... Uh, he couldn't find the udders to start with, but he did eventually. Wow. <laughs> um, and some shearing that we did with the wool. And we've shown some of the other creatures in the past, but we did have some chickens that were added and eggs. And I'm sure you've seen some of our other... Uh, we've got like a chicken pig creature and some other creatures that may be coming in the world, but we want to definitely have... the. The ranching creatures you would expect in game, of course, and then we'll have some more Varen specific ones coming out. The next one, the next creature we have is actually quite awesome. It's the crab fish, ca crab fish, <laughs> which I love. Uh, Danny did such a good job with this one. Yeah, careful what you what you go out there fishing for. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you might catch one of these bad boys. Um, and then for those of you who got the Falgaze Stalker, this is how that's coming along. And we actually have a turntable for it. And don't worry, I'll be showing that costume in a moment here, too. Um, but it's looking sick. Looks and great. Yeah, I love it. We will be making many variants of that, I'm sure, for creatures in the world. You know, I, I was, they had, um, I can't remember the name of it. Is it, a, is it Manicore or what, what is, I can't remember the name of the creature that's similar to this in D&D, uh, &D, but I was watching that D&D &D movie and I, I I thought they did a great job with that movie. And I think they had one of the, uh, similar to this in the uh, little maze area. Yeah, <laughs> I actually cool. like the D&D &D movie as well. Yeah, um, normally the D&D &D movies are cheesy, but that one was really good. <laughs> yeah. And then this is the Desolation Outlander armor that you just saw in that turntable. Looks Badass. Jinsey did such a good job. Then we have the second sword. And I believe we got a Vec donning this. For those of you who maybe haven't seen uh, a Vec in a bit, they are pretty cool looking. Looks great. And this one was done by Keith. I think he's one of the longest running employees here at Intrepid, right? He was our first uh, ever hired, actually. Yeah. Keith has made a lot of awesome stuff. A lot of great stuff. He's a phenomenal artist, great modeler, character artist. And then we've got the Sons of Fortune. And Beautiful. a couple Soul Seeker variants. <coughs> And a couple Love it. masks. So the first one is the Tormentor's Visage. Oh, I was wearing that, but the white version. I just yeah. didn't have the cloak on. <laughs> oh, for the Soul, yeah, for the for Soul the, Seeker. The, yeah. Yeah, if you saw Steven's character in game. Yeah. And then we've got the Midnight Mask. I think this is still work in progress, but you can see some of it. And then the fun one, drum roll. Oh, yeah, Stephen can't hear the drum roll. Now he can. Uh-oh. Drum roll. Can hear the drum roll. <laughs> We've got our new Nikuin looks. Woo. Oh, yeah. So um, you so probably saw some of the faces that we had here. Um, and then we have the bodies. And then I also have some more shots for you guys to check out as well. But they and are coming are along the, really nicely. This is the Nikuin. These are the in-game models. Yep. Yep. So you saw the concept art previously. Now these are the models. Um, and of course, you'll have some customization for yourself. This is just like, you know, one that we've generated. Somebody said, holy mother of forearms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's beefy. That was great. Very nice. Looks great. And then we've got the female. So I'll go over to them. And I do have a turntable for the female as well. Super cool. Love it. Yeah, looks so good. Love the body art. The tattoos and stuff. Yeah. And we will have like a whole tattoo system in game as well, which is really exciting. Absolutely. Here's the turntable of the female. Yeah, I love the uh, Polynesian influences for this race. I think they, uh, you know, it's it's a it's an often underrepresented uh, cultural <clears throat> influence in a lot of games, and I I think that uh, the Nakuan um, history and lore 
uh, tie in nicely to kind of representing, I think, that uh, that aspect in Ashes. Yeah, I feel like there's not always a lot of Islander or Asian specific uh, yep. vibes. So I'm usually mis misrepresented or underrepresented <laughs> in those yes. games. Sometimes there's not even female characters. So yeah, um, <laughs> with that, let's talk a little bit about studio updates. There's one big one that I know folks have been asking about. And yes. like, is that person going to be on the stream? No, no, no. I'm going to let you know, as someone who was on a live stream <laughs> and did an AMA my first week starting, that's wild. Hey, that you were a trooper. You're a trooper. That I downloaded great. everything and every piece of information I possibly could. Yes. Yeah, so studio update. Uh, some of you might have seen an announcement. We have brought on uh, an absolutely glorious individual by the name of Bill Trost. Um, funny enough, Bill was uh, the first person I'd ever interviewed, um, uh, John and I ever interviewed uh, for Intrepid Studios. Uh, but he joins us as of two weeks ago. Uh, he has a rich history and a, a very tremendous amount of experience having shipped multiple MMOs. Um, and he brings his wealth of knowledge to the team. He's worked with many of our um, uh, many of our, the people in our studio over the course of his his long tenure as a game developer. Um, and he is currently in the process of catching up to speed as much as possible. Uh, so it wasn't quite appropriate for us to invite him on this stream, but uh, I'm sure in a future stream, you guys will have an opportunity uh, to meet and listen to uh, Bill uh, and chat with him. So very excited about that. Yeah, and we've done a few of those where you get to meet and uh, you know learn more about some of the developers, but we usually like to tie that in with a system that they're working on or some kind of content piece. Otherwise, uh, we also get people who are mad because they're like, show us game. We don't want to hear yes. about this person. <laughs> so it's finding a balance of like, we are people, <laughs> but we also are trying to make a product for you and show progression in that. And hopefully you've been seeing that as we move forward. And next month's live stream is also going to be a very long one. So uh, prepare oh yourself goodness. for that. <laughs> oh my goodness. That, you yeah. think this one was... Uh... <laughs> and with that, I think we'll go into our Q&A to wrap things up because we've been holding you all as long as we can so far, but we do have a few more questions and some of them are um, specifically Freehold related and others are not. So we'll go through I will, some I will just, I will, I will just say that many people are asking for a leak. I'm not going to give a leak, but <laughs> um, I am just going to say that next month... And I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be next month. There's a slight possibility it might be the month after, but next month, yeah, the the hint will be send nodes. <laughs> Steven. That's the, what? No, nodes. <laughs> send nodes. I know. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to leak something from PI meeting. Uh, uh -oh. Someone <laughs> might have said the wrong word at one point <laughs> during the uh -oh. PI meeting. <laughs> calling so you out funny. roshan was so uh, <laughs> it was it was so funny we were all laughing so hard um anyways moving on we've got our questions here so these were pulled from the forums reminder that we do sometimes do these we might not do one for next month but we do have a couple q a's slotted for steven um outside uh we'll see how that goes but for this one this is from song rune which that's such a beautiful name uh their question is about freehold plot placement Will it be possible to choose the direction your freehold is facing and buildings are facing on your plot, particularly when using cosmetics from pre-order packs, or will this already be determined by the plot you choose? Um, the answer to those questions are yes, yes, and yes. So you can uh, manipulate the orientation of the freehold plot. You can manipulate the orientation of the particular buildings. And items. And, and items, correct. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then a heavy, heavy degree of customization. And by the way, <clears throat> those systems are in place for the furniture placements and the props. Um, it's just pending kind of UI uh, treatments because right now it's all program art. And, you know, for those of you who are unfamiliar with game development, um, UI is and visual effects and uh, audio effects. are, are yeah. off, exactly are often the most taxed teams because they tend to be at the end of each pipeline. So <laughs> praise them, praise them and QA. So all four of those and, teams and, and are the, like, please give us the thing as yeah. early as possible. <laughs> and just to give context for why they're typically at the end of the pipeline of development for many systems and or uh, content is because you want to have all the iteration done for a particular animation or system or whatever before you get to the phase of the audio visual effects or the ui um and and then typically when those systems all get completed now it's all stacked up and ready to get worked on by those teams um so yeah yeah 
And then the next one is from Zeke of the Phoenix, and they want to know about mounts and freeholds. Will you be able to keep your mounts that you've unlocked on your freeholds plot to move freely about as they please, like in a stable or in a little fenced area? Um, there are a number of different types of ways that creatures can be acquired, some of them in a mount format uh, and can be utilized in animal husbandry slash uh, livestock placements um, on the freehold. But from a cosmetic perspective, uh, we don't quite have a system in place for that yet. I'm not going to rule that out for the future or post-launch, uh, but right now it's delegated specifically to like hunting, taming, uh, livestock, and animal husbandry. All right, and then uh, Tyran Thraxis wants to know about moving freeholds. How many times a year do you suspect that moving uh, that most players will be moving residents based on nodes being eliminated from sieges? Ooh, that's a good question, and there are a lot of variables that influence that answer. I'm not sure I can give an average, um, but what I would say is that depending on <clears throat> the political dynamic of a server. Um, if a server tends to have more um, um, more combat and or sieges against nodes, <clears throat> that is going to increase the amount of uh, opportunity for freeholds to be removed from the world and then replaced. Um, I'm not sure I have an average. What I will say is that it is very important to remember that Ashes is not a PvP game and it is not a PvE game. It is a PvX game. And that has a very specific meaning. It means that as these systems are developed, as they are designed, and they are integrated with each other, they are done so from a competitive viewpoint um, and how that system relates to both PvE and PvP. Freeholds are one of those systems very much so. Um, and it's because of the cyclical nature that we're attempting to achieve with the development of nodes and the destruction of nodes. The world is a rapidly and dynamically changing place, really. So it's it's intended to be something that is constantly recycling and is, is leaking out different types of content and new content um, that revitalizes the player interest and, and stimulates new points of conflict or cooperation, right? That is what the goal is or, of the system. And building the history of the game, like for instance, if you're part of the node that is the longest running node in the history of your server, like that's epic, that's a story to tell, right? And I think that hopefully you feel, um, you feel like you are part of it so much right. that you want to to fight for your your freehold and right. fight for your citizenship and fight for your uh, your area that you're in. Um, for yeah. anyone who has played a like game that has persistency like that, it is there's a, a little bit of you know ego that comes with some of that. I feel like yeah. when it comes to servers and and, and notoriety. For sure. Um, and of I course, like somebody. I think Biggie said, uh, "PVP now stands for player versus pig." <laughs> <laughs> when you killed the mama pig and the babies had to hey, be in it, front of the pig. We don't know that the piglet was related. They could have been from different pig families. There was no other pig, mama pigs there. We don't know that for certain. <laughs> Dr. Bucky, we need an update. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Zayer you know, wants to know. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, um, I loved the emote that they did with the chicken dance. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it was so great. I was laughing. No, so hard. A, a hilarious story. I was late for a meeting yesterday with uh, with Bucky, Corey, and uh, Mike. And they took a video and they sent me a video on Slack. And they were doing... And let me see, can I, can I send this to you and you can show yeah, yeah, it? Yeah, you can send it to Hold me on. in DM. And, uh... I, I think... I... <laughs> They told me that I could show it. Hold on. Let me see. Maybe they're going to regret that. Oh, <laughs> no. I think they might. Hold on. Um, okay, here we go. Got it. And let me... They're probably trying to run to my office right now and stop me from doing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just sent it to you in a, a DM on Slack. Okay. Um, oh, it's in like a... So this was at this is after we this is after we recorded. They uh I they were waiting for me to come to oh a meeting. I had, to, I had I had to run out and do I had to run out for an errand and I was late for my meeting like five minutes and so they sent me this. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna drag it onto here. 
Oh, it's because why is it an MOV? I don't know. I don't know how they took it. They probably did it on a phone or or oh, or on their. Uh, I think because it's webcam. MOV, I can't put it on oh, here. Oh, but. Sad. I can do it a different way. I can play it on a screen, screen and screen oh, capture. Oh, yeah. Good call. good call. Good call. Yeah, yeah. So give me a second to. So the uh, the, the idea is that uh, you know a lot of these different emotes are part of you know the game that you can kind of express yourself in. Uh, this one was a leftover for those of you who uh, who were in APOC and and tested for uh, for APOC. You had this particular emote. I have six monitors, so I gotta I gotta find the right monitor. Oh, <laughs> okay. No. I'm going to transition here. You're going to get a full screen of whatever this is. Steven. This is what... <laughs> Where's Steven? Steven. There's, there's Bucky, Steven. Corey, and Mike. <laughs> <laughs> they were doing You know people are going great... to zoom in on are, the, the images on people's... They're animation references. <laughs> <laughs> the mocap for the no, I don't think those were mocap yeah. animations. But so they're, good. They're, we need so the funny. mocap suit on them next time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in regards to the data about like sieges and nodes and things like that, we will be capturing a lot of that stuff in the back end. So we could do some really cool like server statistic data. Um, and I know from the marketing perspective, I would love to do like um, Absolutely. lots of graphics like that with with details yeah. and stuff for you guys to to look at on the website when it comes to server um, details as well. Uh, the next question here is from <laughs> Zayer, maintaining a freehold. Is there going to be an upkeep to freeholds and nodes that if not provided will degrade the freehold, such as materials required to keep things running? Um, well, as we spoke a little bit about uh, through the artisanship and processing uh, mechanics, fuel is a necessary component of the <clears throat> um, actions that you can take with processing stations. However, if we're talking about like material, <coughs> excuse me, if we're talking about material maintenance necessary for the actual uh, freehold itself, uh, no. There is, however, a tax system which requires tax uh, taxes to be paid on the property that you own, um, and that tax system is um, is uh, informed by the number of permits for in the types of buildings and upgrades that you have on the freehold as well, including potentially the business. Um, so those tax certifications are kind of what's necessary to maintain or upkeep the node. Okay. And, but in regards to like crops and creatures, will they have to have some upkeep to keep those things alive? And yeah, that's, growing? that's the, the livestock and the crop yeah. rotations have a process oriented, uh, um, uh, 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 approach, which means that it includes things like watering and fertilizing and feeding and, um, uh, you know, raising those, that's kind of the process by which you get these things to the mature state. The other thing is that like different types of assets on the, on the farming side or on the livestock side, um, they have different types of interactions. So right now you're just kind of seeing one interaction. The system hasn't been fully implemented yet. Uh, but, you know, certain types of creatures can be either butchered or they can be harvested for their wool uh, or their uh, milk. Um, and then they can be, you know, plants can be like uprooted. They can be uh, fruited. They can be um, uh, harvested. There's different types of interacts that are available based on the type of asset from the farming perspective. People are already zooming in on the whiteboard in the background. <laughs> oh, no. Did, uh oh, is there stuff on there? I don't know, but it's funny. Um, next up, we've got Strange Abe who wants to know about super fast freehold gathering. Will there be quicker gather function in your freehold than the one that was seen? Because right now you're like gathering oh one God. at a time on the crabs. Uh, well, yes, there'll be different types of tools and or machinery that can be used to um, like plant multiple seed types within a particular infrastructure that gives you bundles and or many different harvestings. That's per part of progression. So as you get more adept at farming, you have the ability to kind of mass produce. Uh, and the same is true when you talk about quality, quantity, speed of processing across many of the uh, different processing professions. All right. And then we've got... Team America wanting to know about guild hall crafting. And I did see a bunch of questions about guild halls in the chat too, but this was about freeholds, not guild halls. Um, yeah. Will guild halls be able to build high-end crafting stations or other otherwise different mechanics from freeholds? Um, generally, um, let me 
pause on the guild hall discussion because there's still some active iteration being done on the designs for that based on yeah. what we've previously had um so that'll be something that we'll update in the future on guild halls cool, cool. makes sense i mean we could probably do a whole thing just on guild halls that's why exactly. i didn't i saw a lot of questions about them in there i was like that's a whole other yeah. thing homies <laughs> the big can of um, worms <laughs> yeah jalan wants to know about freehold pvp are you safe while sure. on your freehold or do you have to be in a building to have safety from other players? Currently, the only safe space for the freehold is the home. So if you are within the home's footprint, you cannot be harmed via damage by other players. Do you have to like lock your doors and windows like some other games just, that I've nope, part of? Just, just, on, just okay. on the footprint of the home. Okay. All right. Yep. On the footprint of the home, what prevents players from PVPing you? Is it just like a zone type of it's thing? A, where it's like... a hard lock when the system, when the ability checks a valid target, the, the return is no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just wanted to clarify because people are going to ask further. Uh, and Peregrinium uh, or Grinum wants to know about freehold durability. durability. Could you give us an idea of how uh, durable a freehold is in case you, your node is successfully staged? Like, mm -hmm. how does that? You know how do, how long do I have to basically go clean up my stuff? Yeah, that's the you know that's a it's a balanced question, and it's something that's going to be a part of when we test that functionality. You know, where does landing right live? Um, and you know, my expectation is that given the scope of time that's available for the freehold to be destroyed potentially after a node siege, um, we want to cater that balance uh, towards that period of time, essentially. Uh, and knowing that that's a few hours, uh, potentially, um, you want it obviously to scale based on the number of participants and or attackers you might have, um, but creating kind of a, um, a mini encounter slash experience there. So I don't have a direct answer to you. It's going to live within the time frame um, uh, of that uh, period of time that the freehold can be destructed. Awesome. And these last two questions that were pulled from our forum folks are not necessarily freehold specific so you can it's all freeholds <sighs> uh smucky wants to know about monster coins and world bosses will world bosses like the like tumak uh take part in the npc sieges on nodes and will players be able to use a monster coin to play as one of those world bosses in an event that is the intent is that we will have varying quality of monster coins available Creatures like Tumak may participate in certain atrophy events or other types of events. Um, and if you have the very rare and legendary type of monster coin that's available to be used on a creature type like Tumak, then yes, you could inhabit him. That's the intent of the system. Um, I love the idea that Tumak like lives on this node area with you and is like protecting the roaming area around. And then like you're starting to get siege and he's like, all right. I'll help, I'll come help you. Like some diplomacy happens and he gets on board and someone gets to play him. Like, that's cool. I don't know. I like that. Right right now, I will say that um, the monster coin system is used exclusively for assaulting nodes, not for defending them. But oh, okay. uh, they, they took over be... your area. Yes, Little does exactly. he know we're going to do that to it too, but don't tell him <laughs> that. He's dumb. <laughs> Low end. It's fine. Uh, yeah. no, I'm just kidding. Um, next question here is I just like the RP element of it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I love it. Uh, yes. Jibs IRL wants to know about audio design. From an audio creation standpoint, how do you plan to make audio and ashes of creation an immersive experience? And I do want to mention that if you haven't watched our 2022 December. recap, you should definitely go do that because Kat talked. She didn't really want to be on the stream, but she was wonderful. And she did have like a lot of great things to say about the audio in Ashes of Recreation and her thoughts on it. But yeah. I'll pass that to you, Stephen. For sure. I mean, uh, audio is as important as visuals um, and sometimes in certain cases more. Um, for me specifically, when you talk about the audio design of like creatures and you know, the different types of kind of tactile responses you want to hear out of mining and resource gathering and artisanship. I mean, it permeates every layer of the game, right? Um, so we have a phenomenal audio team um, here <clears throat> um, uh, that's comprised of 
uh, both on the engineering side, on the audio design side, and Kat is a phenomenal leader. Um, she is very dedicated to kind of the audio fidelity that we want to achieve with Ashes. I think you guys can see that in the demonstrations and the kind of previews that we provide of the game. Um, you know, that when we're talking about the the bar that we're setting in um, that quality, it is, it is on par with what you would expect from other AAA type games. Um, you know, our perspective is that we want to, you know, create an environment that's going to elicit emotion from the player when they hear these types of sound effects or when they hear these types of ambiences or soundtracks and music that it's accompanied. And we want it to be defining either to the area, to the encounter, to the dungeon, you know, something that when you hear it, you remember, oh, that's that place, you know, that this brings back the memories, right? Um, and so, you know, having having a team that's capable and, and dedicated and creating an experience for themselves, you know, as a player as well. Um, I mean, that I even goes down to, to brand. Like one of the things when we first started was making that iconic like screech sound when you hear the uh, the Phoenix come onto screen. And, you know, some Absolutely. people were like, well, why are you being so picky? Why do you want that sound to be in everything? I was like, because it's like the that sound you get when you're like, you know what it is right away. I think that to me, that's so important for not only, you know, the immersion of in-game, but in other external places as well for people Absolutely. to know your brand and see that it's iconic. Um, and Stephen, you made it. Oh all the God. questions, <laughs> all of the I, things covered. I said at the start, I think this would have taken about one and a half to two hours, and I think we're just going to be under two hours. That's just not too under bad. two hours. I think the next <laughs> one's going to be a long one too. But um, we hope Cute. that you have all enjoyed this. Stephen, do you have any final things that you want to mention before no, I do I, some quick yeah. reminders? Absolutely. I just want to say, you know, thank you guys for being great sports and and dedicated supporters for the project. Um, you know, I know that development and the journey of development is not a journey for everyone and it means very much to us that we have this rapport established with our core audience our 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 golden players um, to kind of provide us with the navigational feedback and direction that we're taking on the game side and making sure that that's validated by what our core audience wants and believes in, right? I mean, that is the best type of, of relationship that, that any developer can have with their audience. And we are very privileged and honored to have that relationship with you guys. And we appreciate it. Um, we hope you like what you're seeing and you guys are excited for playing the game because we're here every day day hard at work trying to make this dream a reality everyone's kicking butt um and having fun while we're doing it because you know gamers um but if you do have thoughts and feedback for us head on over to our forums forums.ashesofcreation.com we have some threads that are already pre-made but you can also create your own we'll be creating some um feedback reports for our developers so please please share that information with us um, also, don't forget that Stephen will be joining the Ashen Forge for their 100th episode over on twitch.tv slash theoryforge on July 9th. So please tune into that. Um, it should be a really good time. Stephen always um, answers, sometimes leaks something. So we'll see what uh -oh. comes with that. <laughs> um, we also have our monthly cosmetic swap over that's happening for Songs of the Sea on July 12th, if you're interested in that. Um, and we don't have all the information on the swap over Stephen was giving you all. Uh, a very big heads up that we, cosmetic packs and stuff are going to be changing in the future from pre-order packs. So just keep that in mind. We will have more information as uh, we get closer to that, but still we'll give you enough time to and warning in advance. So don't worry too much about that. And of course, thank you very much to all of you for sticking with us for two hours and for following our journey. We hope that you enjoy it. it is, you know, making games is not easy as people think it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we also want folks to, we want to say thank you to Dr. Bucky, uh, Mike, Corey, and of course, Stephen for presenting some really great information on freeholds. We'll have some articles and uh, content up for you guys after this. So stay tuned for all of that. And if you follow us on all of our social channels, we also give lots of information on <laughs> uh, things on a daily basis. So you will have plenty of Ashes of Creation uh, content to consume throughout the weeks. Um, and of course, we will have the video up on YouTube. Um, we're going to have the 4K one right away today for just the gameplay segment. And then the full dev update should be up tomorrow, pending technology cooperates. And if you leave a comment on the dev update, you could be spotlighted for our next one. So make sure you're a subscriber and that we can see that you're a subscriber and you could get your comments spotlighted on our next live stream. 
So with that, we are going to wrap up today and we hope that you have a wonderful month and we will see you next month. And happy for 4th of July for you guys yeah. out there in America. <laughs> happy birthday to Steven because your birthday is going to happen before the uh, update. The next update. Next, I know, two weeks. Bye, guys. He's getting old. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> He's like the same age as me. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Bye.